Hello everyone, welcome back to National Ag Day, live here from South Bank in Melbourne. We are so, so thrilled that you have all come out to support us today, both in person, up in Sydney, and online on our Facebook page. We have loved receiving your support online through the hashtag AgDayAU. Don't forget that the competition is still open for a few more hours. $5,000 cash prize brought to you by Syngenta. Second prize, $1,000 and four runner-up prizes of $500 each. All you need to do is submit a photo or a video online of you celebrating the essence of Aussie agriculture. And we'd love to see whatever story that may be. Jump on to agday.org.au to submit your photos there. Open to anyone and everyone and entry is free. So good luck. We can't wait to see those photos. We are about to bring in our last guest uh, live here from Melbourne, but don't go anywhere because we still have one more guest um, coming to you live from Sydney. So I'm very, very excited to introduce um, our next guest, who is our Australian Farmer of the Year. And hopefully we have the stream. There he is, Michael Taylor. Welcome to National Ag Day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you very much for having me. I'm actually, I'm actually Tell not on us. the farm today. <laughs> where are you? Tell us about where you are. Well, um, it was going to be minus two frost tonight, so I've actually escaped down to the, the beach at Coffs Harbour. <laughs> but, no, I'm down here. I'm down here for other reasons. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> so that's why I'm not, not looking like the, a regular farmer, maybe. Well, you look, you look wonderful and we're so thrilled that you're joining us from wherever you are today. Tell everyone at home um, a bit about your backstory, um, what type of production that you're running and, and your history in, in, in farming. Yeah, look, I'm, uh, I'm a sixth six generation farmer on, on the land that, uh, that my ancestors settled on. Um, it was uh, actually Anawan country and the uh, Northern New South Wales on the New England Tablelands. So we're at about a thousand metres, which is why we still get minus two degree frost sometimes at this time of the year. But um, um, yeah, it's, we've, we've been uh, primarily superfine merinos ever since we started. Uh, the New England Tablelands is renowned for its uh, grazing and, uh, and pastures. And uh, yeah, there's a huge amount of innovation happened over there. We also have cattle um, but we've diversified into timber and um, we do some agri, agri tourism as well um, because we like to, to have, a, have an open gate so we can show people um, what we do and, and where their food and fibre comes from. You were awarded the Australian National Farmer of the Year because of your work in innovation and future farming. Would you please explain to us what that means and what the work um, was that went into the uh, recognition for this award? Yeah, look, I'd, I'd love to claim being, uh, being the most innovative farmer, but it's a, it's a combined effort over many generations and many other farmers in, in, in our region and beyond. But yeah, look, going back, going back a long way, I guess uh, my family's always been looking for, um, you know, new, new and better ways to, to produce, you know, the food and fiber that we do. Um, I think uh, what we've become known for is, is our, um, our sustain, sustainable farming practices. Um, and I, I won't say that they're all, all perfect, but, uh, but we're, we're a lot more in touch with, uh, with our, our, our natural, natural capital and uh, the land that we that we believe we're stewards of these days. And um, um, we've, we've innovated production through, you know, fertilizer use and, and, and cropping and, and pastures and, and all sorts of things and genetic improvements in our, our sheep and, and cattle. But, but look, it's, uh, it's all come around to being, being more in touch with, with the land and looking, looking, you know, I'm six generations uh, and we're still producing um, food and fiber off the same land. And, and we'd like to see that, um, you know, going ahead for many more generations. So um, we have to really respect uh, our, our natural resources. 
and um, and we're doing a lot of things to to look after them, like um, ma managing our, uh, our, our, our uh, grazing and uh, to maintain ground cover and uh, planting more trees uh, and, and recreating biodiversity that has been lost in the past. And um, uh, and we're doing a lot, there's a lot of, yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're just some of the things. I know there is a, um, a mountain of things really that make up everything that you do. You are a sixth generation farmer. It is an incredible amount of knowledge that gets passed down. How has innovation played a role in this? As I'm hearing you talk about this and, and your future proofing and, and, and thinking about um, the future of the property. And um, I wonder how innovation has changed over those generations and, and, and whether that has been a through line in, conti in the continuation of the family um, on, on the property. Yeah, look, I think a lot of people, you know, they hear six generations, you know, 180 plus years, and they think that's a, that's a long time. But in terms of our landscape, it's it's only a very, very, very brief period. So we're only uh, we're only starting to get a, a, a small understanding of the, the larger cycles, um, and uh, you know, as is being documented through through climate change at the moment. But um, um, yeah, we're we're you know we're living in a very modified landscape now, so we're we're thinking about ways that we we can better improve um, um, the resilience um, as you know as as the seasons change. So part of that has been a, lot, a huge amount of uh, replanting of trees. Um, as as cycles happen, we've we've had to uh, look at different species of trees. Um, and the technology in, in planting those trees and propagating those trees, but also uh, ensuring that we're, you know, that we're, we're make, able to make an income and able to produce, uh, you know, continue to produce food and fiber off the land too. So um, we're actually just right now, we're harvesting trees that were planted by my parents 35 years ago. Um, so that's, you know, 35 years is actually a pretty small, a pretty short cycle for a lot of, for a lot of timber industries around the world, over in Scandinavia, they, you know, 80 years is a is a is a harvest cycle for trees. So um, we've we've been experimenting, I guess. Uh, you know what we do, we're based a lot of it on on what's been done overseas and maybe in other areas where farm forestry is more viable. Um, but we're having to adapt uh, our practices with the farm forestry for for our area. Um, in terms of the livestock, we're you know, we're seeing seeing the uh, environment change too. So we've adapted our, our grazing management to, to make that more resilient as well. So I've, since I've been back on the farm, I've been through three droughts uh, and 2019 was was a record drought for, for my family. So um, lots of challenges. And now we're seeing one of the wettest periods only two years later. Lots of challenges and uh, ups and downs that you are, um, working through as a family and and um, innovating along the way, making challenges along, uh, rising to the challenges along the way. You know, you spoke to um, taking on board practices from overseas, but Aussie farmers are some of the most innovative in the world. Have you noticed through this outreach and these learnings, um, what we as um, Australian farmers are bringing to the community at large and, and, and how do we, sort of measure up on a global scale? Look, I think uh, Australians are, Australian farmers are in, in the, you know, bottom four or five in terms of um, su subsidies and support from, <laughs> so we, we have to be, we have to be pretty smart in the way we run our, our businesses. Um, and, and then of course, to make those businesses sustainable. So yeah, we've, we, we have innovated a lot of ideas, whether it's, you know, like tree, tree planters or things that my, my father's created, or whether it's, you know, planting techniques and planting designs uh, across the landscape. Um, unfortunately, a lot of it still for us in, in where we are is, is, is all new. So we've made a lot of mistakes along the way, but, um, but the most important thing is we're able to 
share, share that information with other farmers and, and learn from other farmers too that, that come in with fresh ideas. So I think, I think often um, th there's this idea that, that farmers come, come up with ideas completely out of the blue and it's very innovative, but, but in actual fact, farmers are working together right across the country trying to figure out um, how to do things better. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a team effort. <laughs> It's a team effort indeed. What does the future of farming look and feel like to you? And what would you hope is the vision for the future, not just of your property, but of the um, connection between urban communities and agricultural communities at large as we celebrate National Ag Day today? Look, I think we're living in a really exciting time for me to be able to be you know, broadcast right across the country like this talking to to everybody it's it's uh it's changed the way w we connect with our customers and um and, and the transparency in, in what we're doing and that leads to, to more integrity and uh so i i think i think um it's yeah it's a really exciting time because um as the demand for you know food food security food and fiber security um it we're also able to connect better with our customers and to know what they want and and um for them to feed you know more ideas into what we do too so it's not it's not just farmers operating by themselves uh in isolation um so yeah look i think it I think uh, the future of agriculture is very exciting it just it just links back to everything in our lives and um, um yeah to be able to you know we're a lot more mobile these days too so to be able to get um our, our urban Cousins back, you know, out into out onto farms. It's a lot easier than it used to be. So, pro provided we don't have too many more pandemic issues. <laughs> yes, indeed, we are all hoping for that not to happen. Um, Michael, <laughs> just before you go, lastly, please just tell us um, for everyone who's watching at home. Um, any any last words and 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 supportive words that people can um, take with them as we celebrate our farmers and celebrate local produce today. And um, yes, we would love to we would love to hear from you. <laughs> um, yeah, look, any chance you can get get out in the country and and uh, it, and look over the fence as you're driving down the road and and uh, when you stop in country towns, you know, talk talk to farmers and. Um, I'd, I'd just like to shout out to my, my family and my wife, Millie, you know, Millie's, Millie, my wife's from the middle of Paris. So it's been a huge change for her. Um, but that's, that's opened up, you know, so many avenues for, for, um, understanding that, you know, what, what we're doing and what it leads to, how important it is. So yeah, I say just get, get out in the countryside, go for a drive. It, you might have a destination, but, but make the most of the, the journey on the way. Um, we're, we're doing that as well every day in our, in our work. Um, and farmers, I think g generally, most of the time, we're really proud of what we're trying to do. We're trying to do the best we can under the circumstances. And as you know, uh, battling, battling the, uh, <laughs> the weather and, uh, and what, what, whatever else mother nature throws at us, it's, um, um, we, we can only do the best we can. So, um, but, but connect with your farmers next time you, you get a chance. That's wonderful. Connect with your farmers. We love that. Michael, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the beautiful sunny weather in Coffs and, um, and congratulations on the acknowledgement and all the successes. So we wish you the best and the, the best of the future for your farm as well. Thank you very much. Everybody have a nice day. Thank you very much. Everybody have a nice day. Thank you.